Podcast. My name's Rob Howard, and today I'm joined by Marcus Hurley. And well, we're all having a wonderful Christmas time. Um, it's over. In our, in our game over, over, man. Game over. Yeah, I'm stone cold sober tonight. I I need a break from the carnage. Me too. So uh, yeah, that's how it is. Always on the tiny red. Oh, got a box for that's it. it. For You're just doing a much better job of pacing. Oh, no, I've got a box for it. Sue's got me a box as a present. Is that the jam donut flavour? Yeah, four of the jam donuts, mm. um, four of these, peaches and cream. Peaches and cream. Are you? You've got. Oh yeah, uh, I like that one. Tiny Rebel dessert beer. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. She, she goes. You seem to like um, savoury foods, but sweet beers. And I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yep. Um, I've still got my brew dog ones. I haven't finished those. Um, but I also got like a really sweet. Yeah, I got some tiny brew rebel one. Let me grab a case. Anyway, it's called like Chocky something. It's a triple choc oh, um, something. I think it's not really a stout because it's not as thick, but it tastes yeah. like a chocolate stout. Yeah. But it's like 8%, 8.9 or 8.8% or something. It sounds so like, bad. I, I had one and it lasted me all day drinking it. <laughs> I, I, I would well, find anyway, one of those would last me all day. Podcast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it, unlike <laughs> most beers like that, it doesn't taste horrible. You know, it, it tastes like you know you got those other kind of um, like Bishop's Finger style bottle ones and all that, the chocolate yeah. ones that you used to get, the chocolate porters and all that sort of thing. Oh, it just I used tastes, to love it a young like double chocolate stout. Yeah, it tastes like one of those. It's a triple choc one. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. so games. I, I got some Villa Ricky's <laughs> beer. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. games. Yeah. Uh, so um, it was the Game Awards a few weeks ago, just before Christmas, and. I just wanted to kind of mention a few things on there because there was quite a few notable announcements and uh, like marketing moments, I guess you could say. Um, Marcus, you wanted to mention the the whole Matrix. Time, I thought that right? was brilliant. Um, because so, can we make it very clear which bit was brilliant? Because I think you guys have seen the film as well. No, I haven't. <laughs> okay, I haven't yeah, seen it. it's it's, it's um, basically they, the film they, is they no didn't good, really even go into it in the. Um, the Game Awards. It was um, they mentioned you had um, Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss was there as well, yeah. and they were both yeah. basically just talking about um, this Matrix film coming out and the the continued um, advertisement of the Unreal Five engine and all the amazing bonkers yeah. mental things it can do. Um, the the yeah the point they were trying to make is that they can take the assets from the movie. And they're just interchangeable. Yeah. Um, I've, I've actually downloaded this onto my PS5. And um, you can control it. That like There are bits of it where you can like aim and shoot at things. Um, but it is a bit on rails. Um, it's a tech demo, isn't it? The, yeah. Uh, what's, yeah, no, but what's um, mind-blowing is after all of that, uh, it just dumps you in the middle of this city that looks exactly like the set of The Matrix and you can yeah. fly around it. Um, the frame rate isn't incredible, like it's 30 or whatever, but it's it's pretty cool. You can fly or walk. Um, it's just amazing, um, the attention to detail, and it's really like a, a kind of a hint of what's to come. Um, yeah. Because it's clear that they have not even touched the, scratched the surface of what these new consoles are capable of. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's like... Such that it is that we are in a bit of a holding pattern while we suffer through these chip yeah. shortages brought about by COVID and stuff. So, it's another one of those yeah. demos where they kind of change lighting all that, that we've seen before all of the oh, usual like the benchmark ray tracing, yeah that, all of the usual of ray, ray, ray kind of stuff, stuff yeah. but, you're, but you're walking through it at the time and you pull up a menu and just choose to increase traffic decrease change the time of day and you see all of the shadows you imagine actually looking at a city and all of the shadows and everything moving at real time as the sun's moving over um, it so sounds very cool and very clever and totally not the sort of thing I could ever be asked to actually no no bother spending any time with. But I mean, <laughs> it's that kind of it's that kind I mean, of I'd, detail of control. Yeah. I think is the point. Yeah, 
It's it's initially impressive. The thing is, uh, unless you're desperately, unless you need desperate proof that it is all being rendered in real time, you can just watch it on YouTube. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I think so, I, it sounds but, quite passive. It sounds incredibly cool, and it's quite exciting that games will be getting in this direction. I think that, that's that's the, the the quality takeaway from it for me. Yeah. Um, but yes, unless yeah. I get to cut people into little bitty pieces and basically uh, uh, have have fun murdering people in that beautiful city, I can't see the point. I think it's going to be GTA Five. Yeah. Though. So exactly what you've just mentioned. It, no it was... six. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was just it was it came out like a a, a, a very good time riding the hype of this new Matrix yeah. movie that everyone was really excited about. Um, I certainly was before I saw it anyway. Um, <laughs> and also, and, and, and just like, you know, there ain't a lot of games out uh, for this time of the year, really. And um, not, you know, for a change, they normally yeah. are. Um, so I just, I just think it was an, a, an expert bit of marketing um, that had a really big splash, uh, you know, an, an, an effect. So just thought it was worth mentioning. Yeah. Um, there were many other... Things was there anything that jumped out at you, Will, from the uh, announcement? I'll be honest, I at the game found board? it exceptionally uninteresting this year. Um, announcement wise, yeah. there there were no particularly new big games announcements that there, there wasn't really much new that I can recall. Um, certainly nothing uh, from my little world. Um, I thought the one you were going to go for would be Wonder Woman. Was that the Games Award? God, hang on, that, is... sorry, that feels like so long ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that did. Ah, sorry. Yes, that was that was it because that's using the so that's uh, Warner Brothers, isn't it? And they are uh, they've confirmed they didn't confirm it at the Games <sighs> Awards. That was the thing they confirmed it shortly after. I think on the YouTube channel, mm. um, the Wonder Woman game. They didn't show any gameplay, as why I've sort of forgotten about it. But what they have said is that it will be using the Nemesis yeah. system, um, as per. Uh, as used in um, Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor. And that makes things very interesting. So that's suggestive of an open world um, action RPG type game where your enemies will come back bigger and stronger and meaner. But instead of orcs, I think we're going to see some form of, uh, I don't know, mutant super villain types. Hmm. Uh, that could be quite exciting and quite interesting. So, um, yeah, that that is super cool. I just don't think we got. A, I, it had slipped my mind. I don't think we had a date or no, anything like that. No, it literally that. was a teaser, wasn't it? It was it's, just. It's in development, and that's what yeah. we know. Sort of that and the Wolverine Marcus, game. Is there anything hmm. really? Yeah. Yeah. Marcus, do you think that there's like a DC uh, like equivalent to orcs? A DC equivalent to orcs. Um, what? Closest one was like Doomsday, <laughs> to be honest. Although you do have a, yeah. it depends where they're going with the story. Because in a lot of the comics, you have a rivalry between uh, the Atlanteans and the Femiscarians. That's it, because they're saying it's going to be set all so in that world. I it could think. be. I don't you could think be. Coming it could, to, like, be, it could be Aquaman or contemporary. Or it could Namor. be corrupted Atlanteans. Yes, yeah. like, could, could, they I could, think Namor. Yeah. Namor might yeah. be one because he he's like another king of Atlantis or something like that. So he's not, and that nicely contains yeah. it as well as a landmass to kind of conquer. Or if they if they are going to go for that same yeah. sort of structure, yeah. that'd be pretty cool. It's cool. Um, they, they'll find they'll find yeah. something. They they will have to find a way to have these lieutenants if it, if they follow the nemesis similarly. So you, you'll get the standard. Well, that, that's yeah. not going to be any trouble because she's got plenty of those around her. Trained her. There are loads of those general buddies she has. Um, no, I'm, I'm talking about the enemies, those that the Nemesis oh, okay. system utilises. So, like, you get the senior orcs. Yeah. Uh, and if, 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 a, if a minion of some sort of grunt kills oh. you, normally that one gets promoted and enters the Nemesis system I, and all of that stuff. Just an outside thought, because we don't know anything mm. about this game. Could Nothing. You ima- could you imagine if it was a Wonder Woman versus the Justice League, a corrupted Justice League, corrupted by Brainiac? Mm. So you go up against Batman, Martian, Manhunter, Flash, Superman. It, See, if they weren't already doing that I in know. Suicide Squad, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd be entertaining that. I think I think that might be yeah, a bit much. But, as much as I like the idea of being able what to awesome kick generals would they be? Ass. Not one nemesis, but each of them. Every time you fight them, they learn. So if you cheese out a battle, it becomes so much harder and you have to get up close. Well, no, no, this is the whole idea. This is what happened with uh, Shadow of War, though, Marcus. Mm. I don't know if you ever got hands-on with yeah, it. Yeah. Is you would have about 20 orc captains 
So you'd have you'd have the, you'd have your main head honchos yeah. in a castle, but they would have like four bodyguards and a series of lieutenants and a pecking order, and each one of those was a member of the nemesis system. So they would fight each other. Uh, they would fight rival clans, uh, but if they killed you, if quite often you would go, if you actually thought you'd beheaded one, it'd come back and it's got these stitches in its neck <laughs> yeah. and it can't be beheaded next time. <laughs> and when you meet it, it'll tell you and say, you thought you could cut my head off. Oh, but brilliant. it turns out I've got a thicker neck than you thought. And it's, it's that sort of stuff. <laughs> these baddies come back and they talk to you and they taunt you. And uh, there was one that particularly bugged the hell out of me. It just would not stay dead. And it, it's this it's this army of nemeses, uh, nemesis, nemesis, <laughs> <laughs> namaste. Um, <laughs> but it's it's this uh, this army. So you, you'd you'd have the big bad, which could be uh, corrupted superheroes. I quite I think I like the idea of simply a corrupted Aquaman at the top, or something like that. Or he's been or he's been deposed and kidnapped by some Atlantean nasties who've pushed these powers and normal citizens are being mutated, corrupted, brought in. It could be something yeah. like that, and that would yeah. allow this that's, kind that's of... That's um, what I was like, thinking, because then it's mm. like, if you have Batman as one of these generals, then you've got Gotham PD working as Dominions mm. or something. And it's, you know, that sort of tier level, you've got all of them related to their kind of world and area yeah. and stuff. So with like the Flash, you'd have a lot of the Star Lab employees, and they'd have like ray guns and all this sort of so crazy tiers. shit that they so would do. Oh, story that dependent, could get interesting. Yeah. Exactly, well, it's completely different. We'll it's an I mean, interesting one, definitely. Yeah. It's not as if video games haven't had a similar story in different games before. <laughs> it has been known, but what do you mean the princess is in another castle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I can't. Um, I can't wait to see what they do with that. They've said the combat is apparently like quite sort of, um, you know, similar to a lot of these. Um, you know, the Arkham you know, I mean, games, the, um, the Mordor. Yeah. 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 I mean that. I mean that lifted that a lot, didn't it? Anyway, and um, a lot of the traversal from Assassin's Creed. So yeah, yeah it should be yeah. pretty cool. Um, yeah, I wanted to just mention Star Wars Eclipse, which is the new Star Wars game coming from Quantic Dream. I just brought it up here on Google. Apparently, they, it's not coming out anytime soon. No. Like, they're sort of they, talking about 2027. There was a movie trailer. It was like the start of something. And, and because we couldn't see enough yeah. of what it even could be, it gives it time to change as well, you know. Yeah, I mean, the, the games Quantic Dream make are pretty cinematic-led, so, I, you know, is it, I can imagine it being very that, I've heard, I heard somewhere that it's like, it could be possibly like a David Cage game, a bit like Detroit, yeah, Detroit that's it, being yeah. human and that's stuff. That's the guy who he runs, yeah, he runs that studio, and I know he's a bit problematic. Yeah. But, yeah, there's lots of people <laughs> upset because of just the way that... It's an interactive Star Wars movie. Yeah, it's yeah. heavy rain, isn't it? And, and Metro, uh, yeah. All the the, no, Detroit. Since. Detroit being human, that was it. Not Metro. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I was intrigued by that. There's a couple of other bits as well. There was like a, a, I remember there was like an Evil West, like a Wild West gameplay, sort of gunslinger type game. It looked fun, but I don't remember much else about it. I remember thinking it looked kind of fun at the time. Obviously, there was an expansion oh. to Monster Hunter that I knew about before, but I got some gameplay trailer. That was like cool. Um, yeah uh, to be honest yeah I kind of agree with Will it was just a bit long and stuff and people going oh and now we're going to play I some music from a medley of these games DMCA land for anyone watching on the stream <laughs> and it's just like what <laughs> yeah yeah I mean there was Homeworld 3 I didn't know about Alan Wake 2 was heavily mm. rumoured uh, Said he was sacrifice uh, the sequel to that and Plague Tale. You know those yeah. those were all like jumping out at me, but um, I think we've kind of hit the uh, the main headlines. And the Sonic Two front. Sonic so, Two uh, movie trailer was one of the highlights for me, which wasn't a game, oh, but yeah. it was just Jim Carrey going absolutely mental on a voice I, call. I, I, that I was must amazing. Admit, <laughs> yeah, because the, the first Sonic <laughs> film was more introducing the man that was going to become Dr. Robotnik or Ed, Dr. Eggman, I think that yeah. is in the films. Um, and it very much predicted the sequel because, if I recall correctly, the Sonic film ended up with Sonic back in his land and Jim Carrey's character having arrived in there. And my kids enjoyed that film. And you know what? I'll probably even go take the kids to see that in the cinema because it's the kind of film that gives me an excuse. Um yeah. 
if it's not yeah, yeah. Tells his voice was spot on though which was cool you know whenever they cast and it had Knuckles as well Knuckles looked like they all, they all seemed voiced yes. well um, Idris yeah. Elba's playing Knuckles oh that was it that was it yeah. Yeah. alright you slags <laughs> <laughs> I'm up here <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> oh, and um, another little thing was, which I thought was quite nice to finally see, was the Cuphead expansion, which they've called no. the they've oh, called right. the Delicious Last Course, which stands for DLC. <laughs> I think Cuphead's one of those games. I, I played it very it's, briefly. It's a bastard of a game, um, but I'm, I'm yeah. the amount of work that goes into it though. I'm glad they've got more. I'm it's glad they've beautiful, got more money. and it'll appeal to some people. It's absolutely gorgeous yeah. and. St- Dunning, I, I one of the play. prettiest games I've ever time. seen. Yeah, I, I, I had a very brief go. Where was that? Was uh, when we were at EGX Rest. They had they had some. It was being ported to Nintendo Switch at the time. Oh. I had a very brief go, and in the thirty to forty seconds I was at it, I just thought, no, no. This, <laughs> this reminds me of those um, arcade machines from my youth, where you had to just yeah. put the ten p's in every Bullet time, hell. every five minutes. Yep, yeah, that's it. Pure hell. Uh, and I ain't got the reflexes yeah. for that. Bullet hell. Yeah, I, I played them. I don't mind playing. I didn't mind playing through the first one a bit. I played it on Switch. I played a bit of it on the train, and I found that it was one of those things where you know you've got a very small, finite amount of time, and you might as well just bang your head against the wall until your train stop comes up, because it and it just make it's like teleportation. It used to make my commute go by in seconds, uh, but yeah, it was a bit brutal because you had to finish every level on hard to unlock all of it um so at least it gave you the option to unlock it how you wanted but it was for a game that sort of like had such a kind of uh, appealing um aesthetic it's fucking yeah. hard um it's really you know not the, the i wouldn't say the the difficulty level was in any way uh like lines up with the visuals mm. you know, it's, it's old it's are. an old school game like a, a really really old yeah. school game as in you the only way you get better at the game is by learning the patterns memorizing yeah, yeah absolutely and the muscle memory and stuff so when you see people really good at it you know they've put the time in <laughs> Or they're just mutants yeah, sure. and they've got some weird so, yeah some people are naturally skillful i ain't <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and some people find pleasure. Oh yeah, in, yeah, yeah. No, in, no. In beating the game, I used to, I used to I'm love those bullet to... hell games. I used to play um, a couple of the Project Raiden ones, the top-down ones. We had the smart bombs. I used to love those games back in the sort of PlayStation One era. But yeah. I couldn't do it now. It's just not me. Oh, and R Type as well. That's another one. Oh, R Type was a wonderful yeah. game. Oh, that, that's that sort of game that you spent yeah. again. You had to just learn every movement. And spend so much time on that in the arcades. Yeah. Yeah, it was horrific. Speaking of horror, though, oh. um, GTFO. Um, I saw it as a co-op That's survival FPS game. Hmm? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's ironic. I said GTFO, and then yes. my internet did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they used they used the awards to launch yeah. it, didn't they? It's been in early access. I like the idea that it's co-op because it's almost like playing Metro co-op. It's that sort of game. Um, so you can be scared of a friend as you're running through corridors from all manner of nasty looking creatures trying to eat you or just kill you or wear you or something equally worse. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, I just find it interesting whenever a new game comes out because you know horror is something like in film and TV. It it often gets passed up. So I, I like it when something still keeps that genre alive in some way. Because you know, I just don't know how it's how it's horrific when you're playing with other people online um, to talk to. Well, I don't know, but games like Evil Within, all those sort of games, even Resident Evil Two Remake. If I was playing that co-op, I would skill shit myself. <laughs> having someone else, I having someone else I to talk would, to, really. would not stop you from absolutely soiling mm. your pants when something jumps around the corner and tries to eat your face. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I've I've become quite thick skinned towards all this anyway since uh, playing Half Life Alex. I thought you were going to um, say since the that's pandemic, real horror. war has changed. No, Half Life <laughs> Alex is like real horror. You don't not not when you've got things I, flying yeah, right I've, at your I've face. I've seen like. Half Life Alex. It's I would not play that. Yeah. Head crabs literally <laughs> launching towards you in real, well, virtual real time. Fuck that. <laughs> Yeah, it's not nice. It's really anyway, not nice. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much it for me. But 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, I pretty much mentioned everything I found of interest there. Um, oh, and Elden Ring. But you can't deny the, you can't deny the footprint of that event now. No. It's, like, really up there with E3 in terms of, like, the amount of announcements and trailers yeah. and footage and stuff. In terms of the actual winners, I just wanted to quickly mention, um, It Takes Two walked away with Game of the Year, um, which I still want to play. It's on Game Pass. I've downloaded it. Um but it's kind of getting around to organising a twenty or like it's a twenty hour long co-op yeah. game. Well, I, I've just moved my PlayStation Pro back into the snug in my house. I'm intending to purchase that and play it on the couch with the missus if she'll uh, entertain the idea because I can't. You and I, Rob, for example, we live in different worlds. I don't really have any people I know online that I'm likely to ever manage to schedule that 20 hours with that wouldn't be over the space of th- several years. Um, you know, every yeah. time forgetting I know, we how can to get, play. We sometimes get together like, we sometimes get together like every yeah. few weeks when we're all in the same mindset. Um, and that's fine yeah. for me. I'm not, I, I would find it personally a bit of a ball like having to like commit to a weekly fixture for that much time, yeah. you know? So, yeah, unless I can find a local co-op buddy to do it with at I'm some honest, point. Yeah, then... that's your best bet. Get Matt or someone over and uh, just couch co-op it, mate. Drink beer. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'll go around to yeah. John. Old school gaming. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's great, and I can see why it got um, singled out for that. I don't. I can't even really speak for the other nominees. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be all the usual suspects that we've mentioned all year long. Um, unless there's some Nintendo stuff. But I think between us, we probably have given them all a uh, notice. Here's me. Okay, yeah, the other nominees for that were Deathloop, Metroid Dread, which is a game you play on a portable machine that I don't do, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Yeah, didn't touch Village because that stuff not- makes me um, relax my bowels too much. Um <laughs> Yep. But yeah, I think we've touched the rest. You didn't play Village, Ratchet did you, Marcus? I, no, not yet. Um, yeah. I still haven't. I, I started playing 2 on the um, on the Xbox, and then it kind of screwed up. So I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm kind of thinking my options, but I want to jump back into it at some point. Um, yeah. It's just getting around to it, because like, this is why I find games that you can just pick up and carry on a lot easier. Whereas those, they feel like you hunker down. It's the equivalent of like, you know, yeah, running a bath, getting scented candles ready. It's more of a mood. <laughs> <laughs> getting, getting the tenor pants yeah, ready. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. Guardians the of the Galaxy button. won best narrative, um, but we'll talk more about that later, I'm sure. Yeah. Cool. I'm just saying, you could go through these nominees and frame the rest of our conversation based on it, pretty much. Mm. Now that I've looked at yeah, the list. We'll move. Shall we well, move not, on? Let's not Shall go we, there. So, um, I yeah. prepared uh, a little game, uh, which I thought maybe we okay. could have a play on. So, I, I will firstly not sure. claim credit for the idea of the game. I've stolen this very much from one of the uh, IGN UK podcasts' occasional feature games. Uh, I can't remember what they call it. But the principle is, and I think this is actually <coughs> from Richard Osman's House of Games... Uh, and possibly was stolen in a house of games through something else. But basically what I've done is I've taken the name of a video game and I've changed one letter. So I'm going to give you a cryptic clue to the video game, but but with the changed meaning. So I'll give you an example. So if I were to give you the clue saying, spend hours in this Dungeons & Dragons RPG choosing the right hosiery the answer to that may be never winter tights because i've changed the n to a t so it's never winter tights so you firstly got to figure out which game it is and then what letter i've changed to make the clue make sense so judging by your blank expressions this is going to be horrendous (laughs) oh god yeah okay go for that example again you've got yeah you've got to figure it out and then you've got to come up with what the what the uh like the the misspelled name so in this one basically the first part of the clue i'm going to give you is that it's a dungeons and dragons rpg and the second part of the clue is really where the name changes 
that you're going to spend hours choosing through hosiery. Okay, right, right, yeah. I get it. I don't expect to be any good at it, but I okay. understand. So how do you want to do it? I've got ten clues here. Now, we can go all polite and let one of you go first, give a time limit, and then the other one has a guess. Or, and I've got a feeling this may be better, because otherwise there may be complete just radio silence for hours. <laughs> first one to shout it out, and I'll be watching the screen and just presuming whoever got it is, will be in line with the audio. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. All right, okay, yeah, I can always, I can always edit this a bit if it. Let, if let's it see how chaotic this goes. So let's count the tumbleweeds. Right, <laughs> our first question. So our first clue: Britain's Got Talent judge puts on the tux and Walther PPK to defeat yet another threat. Golden Britain's- eye. Sorry, golden eye. <laughs> so what letters changed? I've no idea. Britain's <laughs> Got Talent judge, additional clue, formerly married to Les Dennis, puts on the tux and wolf the PPK to defeat yet another threat. Amanda. <sighs> oh, hold an eye. Yes, Rob gets the point. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should get half, though. What no, the no. I was, I was not get... Mark, Mark has got golden eye, but that wasn't the answer. The answer yeah, was golden eye. I didn't eye. know Amanda Holden was married to Les Dennis or anything oh, well, like it's that. Oh, your quiz, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm playing by the main rules. The, the answer was holden eye. If someone blurts out half of the answer, doesn't mean they yeah. get the point. <laughs> but yes. I didn't even know about that marital thing, but I... I had to look up listed. Amanda Holden. Um, yeah, the amount of it about her. massively. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, cool. uh, let me oh, better write some scores down because these things are very important. Uh, okay. Second question, clue, thing, whatever we call it. All right, let's go. Watch a short-legged, muscular, quadruped marsupial get better and better in this Xbox-exclusive FPS. Watch a short-legged, muscular, quadruped marsupial get better and better in this Xbox-exclusive FPS. Um, so is the first part the bit that you've changed? Um, not in this case. The, 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 the bit... Yes, it is. Sorry, I see what you mean. Yes, it's an Xbox-exclusive FPS. Um, yeah. By Bungie, if it helps. Um, oh, right, okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> So I'm looking at the block, um, and I've changed a letter a bit. So we're talking about a, a small marsupial, and I can't give much more in the way of clues. No. Than... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give oh, it a shit. few more moments watching this pain, and then I might time this one out. Yeah, uh, trying to think what to change it to. Watch a what, short like marsupials. I think what, like, I know the like game, a... but I don't know what to bloody change it to. Like, I can't. And so, a marsupial. <laughs> Rob's googling marsupials. Oh, it's like a kangaroo <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, it can be. It's not a kangaroo or uh, one, but it's an Australian mammal, certainly. <clears throat> okay, oh. final go through. Watch a Something short. Something to do with koalas, maybe. No. Short-legged, muscular, quadruped marsupial get better and better in this Xbox-exclusive FPS, which is therefore Halo Wombat Evolved. Oh, oh God. I wasn't even thinking of, like, the full title. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot it had that little moniker on the end. I was going through so. different ones. I'd gone to Tasmanian <laughs> Devil and thought, what other ones are there? <laughs> yeah, we have to be... Right, okay. Oh, all God. Right, all right, I've all got right. to put the beer away now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, a more recent game here. Uh, a space-based time loop game involving some unbelievable flatulence. A space-based time loop game Involving some unbelievable oh. flatulence. Okay, I think I've got the game. Hmm. It's not Returnal. Oh, then I haven't. <laughs> 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 so is it an is is it a space is this is the game a space age? Yes, it's set in space and it's, and it's a, a series time of time game. loops, yes. And it involves some oh, unbelievable flatulence. I'm just trying to think, because there has been so many fucking time loop games, but that's the only one that I could think of that was space-based. I'll put it this way. 
there were two games out at the same time. One sounded very similar to the other, and they were both totally different. Oh, not Time Shitters. No. Or something. <laughs> no, um, although that would um, actually be genuinely yeah. quite good. <laughs> no, that's time travel, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like it, though. Brilliant. Oh, dear. Oh, right, God. Hang I... on. Oh, no, hang on. I've, uh, how about, is it... Ah, oh, I think I've got the game, but I don't... Go on, throw it out there. Maybe at least Marcus might get the link. What do you think the game is? Uh, is it Outer Wilds? It is. So we've got the game bit. Now, unbelievable flatulence. What letter could we change in the Outer Wilds? I'll take this moment of silence to apologise to any listeners we actually have. <laughs> flatulence, like, like... Five. Yeah, but... Four, three, two. No, I, I, I can't. One. And for I, those possibly screaming at their headphones or just crying or whatever, <laughs> you were right. It was the outer winds. Oh, oh God. Hell, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's because the L isn't very, I was very, trying to like, change you know, the first letter of some of them. wide letter, so <laughs> yeah, I, any I letter. didn't spot it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> okay. Okay, go on then. So I think Rob should get half a point for time shitters, though. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if we're doing that. I, I, I'm not, not entirely certain, but it's a bonus kudos. Um, right. A Tomb Raider-inspired PlayStation exclusive sees us searching okay. for underpants unaffected by a terrible bout of diarrhoea. Uh... Tomb Raider-inspired PlayStation sure exclusive... Game. Sees us searching for underpants unaffected by a terrible bout of diarrhea. Uh. Oh man. Um... Uncharted. <laughs> Bravo, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Uncharted. <laughs> yes. What with an S? Yes. Yeah. Yes, not been sharted in. What does in. that even mean? I've never heard of that have you, before. Have you never? Shart really? Shart to shart is to, to when you think it's a fart, but it's a bit more substantial. I've never heard the term shart. Oh, God. Be thankful. Before. Yeah. <laughs> shart I've, I've experienced me. it, quite frankly. Uh, we've all been there, you yeah. know, at this point in our lives. Yeah, oh, yeah, I right. know exactly. I, yeah, I just didn't know there was a word for that. <laughs> well, I, well, not, not just video games, not just entertainment, or... but education, this podcast. <laughs> Follow through <laughs> is uh, another term I could use for that. But yeah, well done, Marcus. Uh, right, uncharted. So one all. <laughs> okay. Um, I like the tone of this. So far. What should we go for? Yeah. Then? I must. <laughs> all right. So get fifty percent off of citrus fruit in this classic sequel featuring a man with a crowbar. Fifty percent oh. off a of citrus fruit. Half in lime. This... Half lime. Half li- Half yeah, Lime. I'm done no, it, I'm gonna, it was it's Half Lime Two, obviously the sequel. But oh, I reckon I, yeah. you you know no, I reckon the point is there, <laughs> yeah. Marcus. Also, for though obviously this is audio only, but Marcus had the biggest smile I've seen on him. I was like, ready, got that. Oh, it's been a bit too fast. Oh dear. <laughs> right, what else have we got? Let's go with a grumpy old man flies his house over post apocalyptic America, avoiding hordes of clickers and gangs of uh, survivors. Oh, yep, I got it. Last go. of up. <laughs> Last of up, correct. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was going like because I was thinking Fallout. These are easier uh, than the other ones. At the start, I was like, "What is the name of?" We're on a roll now. Is that my, it's, it's the mindset, Marcus? You're you're, you're getting the mindset, I reckon. Okay, yeah, so yeah. increase precipitation to the highest level while slowing time in this third-person shooter. Increase precipitation to the highest level whilst slowing time in this third-person shooter. Now, Max this- Rain. Nailed it. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Is that a good feeling, Rob? Is that a good feeling? <laughs> yeah. Okay. A, nast- a nasty surprise in a trash can leads to adventures in an underwater city. A nasty surprise in the trash can leads to adventures in an underwater city. Nasty. Uh... 
Oh. So game wise, just to be clear, we've got Big Daddies. Yeah, I'm, I know. I got the game. Yeah, and it's it's the trash can. Although it's a horribly American term. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, just trying to visualise what that. Someone's is. screaming. Uh, bin right shock. Now. Bin shock. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rob's back. It's three all. It's that almost getting exciting. We've got. Two left. Oh, so we had to time one out. Okay, I might. Have, if it's a draw, it's a draw. But let let let's. Uh, I may come up with a tie break suddenly. Um, okay, so this is anyone's a reimagining of Greek mythology. No, sorry, uh, a reimagining of mythology sees Kratos killing folks in a series of motor vehicles. God of car. There you go, Rob. Nice. Oh, back with a vengeance. So I thought that, and I thought, mm, maybe not. But then I thought, well, yeah, and then Rob just And went, then he said it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe think less. It's because, it's because first of all, you, you think, like, replacing the letter, it's supposed to, like, sort of make as much sense. Yeah. So it just looks wrong. Well, yeah. like, that's the thing. When, you, it, when he said killing people, I immediately thought, God of Wham. And I was like, but that's not how you... <laughs> it's not yeah, the yeah, game! Yeah. <laughs> oh... Right, um, I can see how f- yeah, I can see how fun this must have been to sort of come up with, mm. like the reversing of it. That's it. That's it. Okay, so final one, possibly space exploration RPG sequel where you build a team, travel the universe, and smith fish for smallmouth or widemouth fish. Sorry, can you do that one again? Space exploration RPG sequel. Or space-based RPG sequel where you build a team, travel the universe, and fish for smallmouth or widemouth fish. Bass Effect. Bass Effect it oh, is, Rob. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> <Not Sorry. a laughs> it's the sequel to Sega Bass Fishing. <laughs> oh, cool. I thought that was All kind right. of fun. Okay, so the that final score. Yeah, it was. was I, I uh, think five by about the halfway mark, I kind of got my head around it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, the blank expressions at the start, but uh, quite fun. Um, the pattern, in case you're interested, just they, these. That was a series of BAF. Uh, not all of them, but all of those games won uh, BAFTA. Oh, nice game oh, of the right, year okay. award. Um, which obviously the BAFTAs weren't the bit we were going from, but. I started with Game of the Year and then realised the Game of the Year awards are shite, so um, I went with something important like the British one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good, good, good approach as well because there's a chart. You know, it's not they're all games that would have had a certain amount of uh, you know time in the sun that we're all going to know. It, you're, yeah, actually picking yeah. stuff that you might have both heard of. <laughs> yeah, even if you didn't remember until you go, oh yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, that was good. Well, I enjoyed that. I yeah, enjoyed well done. That. Thanks for that. That was great. No worries. Okay, um, I guess that leaves us leads us now on to uh, just generally what our games of the year were, mm. um, and the chances are you've probably heard us talk about them at great length because, I mean, I don't know. You have you certainly guys haven't played a great many games. Um, I started writing them down. I've, I've actually played more than I realised, but yes, um, certainly a lot of the heavy hitters listed, I, I didn't really get near. Yeah. Mm. So, so what I'm going to do, I, I think we, we can just go round, um, and some of us might go round a bit longer, but I'm I'm only really going to focus on two games. One of which um, is a crowning best game I've played. Um, but then I've also been smashing through a few that I'd taken all year to get to because I was had certain obstacles like Assassin's Creed Valhalla in my way. And um, so I have just smashed through a few. And some of them, I'm kind of like, I wish I'd had more time with them. So I'm hesitant to bring them up in too much detail because that won't be fair. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, I don't know who wants to kick off, but maybe so I should because I've got So lots. we're doing top three? Can normally do with that. Uh, if you like. Yep. All right. Um, shall I go first? Uh, go for it. Yeah, go on. Then. Why not? My number three is Aliens Fireteam Elite. Yay! Simply yeah, well, we've all played this. Jolly good fun. Not too expensive. And jolly good fun. Can't really go wrong with that. <laughs> not really, no. And um, we've all played it. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, although I think we've yeah, only got Skinner once due to logistics, but... I haven't admittedly played loads of games, so that it might show in my selection. But <laughs> of the ones I have right. played, this was one of the better experiences. You know, so hence it's one of my top threes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Will, do you want to go? I've, I've, I've struggled for my third, sort of, uh, for a ranked side of things. Um, but I will probably go for Immortals, uh, Immortal, I think it is, Phoenix Rising, uh, hmm. which was from way earlier in the year and I'd forgotten it existed, quite frankly, but I picked it back up, thoroughly enjoying it. It's an Ubisoft open world, but it's fun. It's got a sense of humour. Um, it's quite interesting because it's hugely embedded in Greek mythology and only Greek mythology. So unlike Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which was <laughs> all around the ancient Greek life, this is just a, a fun comedy set around there. Um, the combat's good. The action's good. Um, the open world's enjoyable. Finding things, it's that, that slightly grindy powering up loop that I enjoy. Um, yeah, good fun game. Really and just it's just enjoyable. You you yeah. want to pick it up and just play that a little bit more. So it was it was between that cool. and Death Loop for me. Um but I found Death Loop just not quite as good. I'm really struggling to finish that off at the minute. Like <laughs> finding the motivation. Just because it's like it is just like you're going through each like segment or uh quadrant of that game. Yeah. And it's like it's like, oh, and you've got to find this little thing and I've got to the bit now where you've got to sort of like Add, connect the power to each area and it's yeah. such a faff going through that sequence every time you know yeah um, I, I just found that it helped towards the end what it feels like is this massive detective thing but it holds your hand a bit too much actually the the ending for yeah. death loop to me was actually a little bit unsatisfying in that it told you exactly what to do and when there was there was a bit of open endedness about how you did some of the assassinations, but really, what felt like this big mystery, you basically just went right. In the morning, you kill these two in this area, then you go to this area and we do these ones, then it's this area and this these ones, then it's this area with these ones. Go for the final bit. Here's a bit of a plot twist, and off we go. Roll the credits. Boom. Yeah, I've <laughs> I've kind of I've kind of given up with like upgrading myself as well. I'm sort of like. I feel like I've got all the tools to support my Yeah, you don't style. need everything. And I'm just yeah. kind of running around pinning the tail on the donkey now. Yeah, I got, the credits rolled and I kind of went, well, that was good, but yeah. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, but Immortal, I think, will one. last me longer in hmm. my... Uh, uh, Immortal, I'm looking forward to the DLC and I haven't finished the main bit yet. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Okay, well, I think I'm just, I'm just waiting for you guys to... Um, and say things that that you won't have that I have in a way, if mm. that makes sense. So I'm well, going to mention inscription now. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say you're waiting for us to say things that we won't. Nah, no, sorry, I've lost. I'm going to. All right, Are sorry. You I'm going to. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to sort. Tell of me what I have written down on this fine. bit of paper that you won't have played. Goldeneye. <laughs> Basically, the ones that you're least likely to mention. I want to. Do, I want to do first. Because I think you're going to mention ones that I'm more like... Forget it. Uh, <laughs> uh, my first game that I would like to talk about is Inscription, which is a single-player card game done by Daniel Mullins Games. Uh, they did... Um, they did. Uh, what was that game they did before um, that was completely bananas? I'm going to ramble until I... Uh, Oberdin? Did, uh, what was Pony Island. Oh, okay. He did Pony Island, which was very odd. Um, his games are a bit meta and stuff, but anyway, it's all 3D, um, but it's got a very stylized look to it, and you're basically playing against the devil. Um, all you can see is a pair of eyes looking at you. This came out through Devolver. Um, okay. And uh, basically, it's like a roguelike, yeah? So you'll get mm. to the boss, and if he defeats you, you'll start again at the beginning, but not before you get you create your own death card, which is made up of stats from all these other cards that you choose. Um, hmm. And also, the other unique thing is you can get up from the table and walk around. Um, there's all little ornaments and objects. And throughout the game, some of the cards actually speak to you and offer you clues on, um, on like, what, you know, uh, how to actually beat this game because it becomes quite clear that um, 
it's not as simple as just playing the card game and because he'll keep introducing new rules right and different bosses will give you different items it's very good uh it's totally got its hooks in me i was playing it just before we started recording and i'm halfway through another run and hopefully i think there's only four bosses but then the game does something else completely off the charts that i don't know about um but yeah definitely uh, i would say I've, i i as much as it's a very recent game, so there's a recency bias mentioning it, um, it has totally gripped me. I've had Ash over here playing it with him over a bottle of wine um, yeah. because it's one of those ones where you could just, ha- you don't play it like, you know, you can play it together if you like because it's just against computer, but you can make the decisions together and wh- yeah. which cards to play and burn and stuff because you're sacrificing these squirrels to power your, you're like essentially sacrificing. Are they red squirrels squirrel or grey squirrels? There are different squirrels mm, that cool. do different things. Um, but also when you, but also when you sacrifice a creature, you get bones, and so that's another uh, like pro, uh, cost that you pay to uh, to to, to pay, play other creatures. They're mm. all different animals, um, so it's it's really cool. It's like a twisted uh, card game. But yeah, no, I've, I've really enjoyed it, so I'll shut up now. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Marcus, you got another one? Yep, I've got one that you probably won't have or won't talk about. Guilty yeah. Gear Drive. Ah, uh, yes, that was the the, the side scroll system. So the side scroll yeah. beat him up, which Rob yep. described as the most anime thing and the most Marcus thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember it well. I've, I've, when I but, first uh, bought it, I actually did buy the deluxe one, so you get the extra DLC characters they're going to add on. So they've since been added on. There's like a couple more they've chucked in, and there's one recently released in December. So you get to learn even more characters and stuff like that. I've played this quite a bit. Um, sort of a lot of the time spent in practice mode, sort of as they, as they call it, dojo in, where you go in and, and yeah. basically try to get your finger and muscle memory back by trying to relearn combos and things and pieces and how moves can link together to increase damage and everything else. So rather than playing it sort of like Street Fighter 2 style, where you'll just chain a couple of moves together, it's it's that, but then setting up for the next lot and stuff like that. Yeah. But I love it. It's such a beautiful game. It's insane. I've got my ass kicked so many times online. <laughs> like, I've, I've played against someone, I'm like, oh, they're only two levels higher than me. Oh, my God, my character's bouncing around the screen. Okay, this is fun. And then the next round, I've, I've like, learned, and it's almost like that bit in in The Good Matrix where he goes, he's starting to believe. <laughs> and you get that yeah. moment where you're kind of like, oh, it's all coming together now. And then you might lose the third round because you've lost it again. Or you don't. Um but I'm enjoying it. It feels like being back in the arcades again when I was back in college. And I've, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I've always been a beat em up fan at heart. I, even though I don't play them as much, I still follow news on games and development and all that. It's very much a, a core part of me growing up. So seeing this series continue and become more mainstream, because these are the guys that put together the uh, Dragon Ball Z Fighters game. Which everyone mm. was, a lot of oh, people yeah. were raving about. So, does it back, use off, any? Of, is it? Does it have a lot of, in common? Um, like, does it borrow any elements from that? To be honest, I think it's just the art style. They keep evolving it because years ago we they reached a point where people said, "Oh, it looks like it's it looks like a moving cartoon now," and they've reached the point where no, it actually literally looks like a moving cartoon. It's it's three D, two D assets and stuff like that, and it's such a fun game. Um, frustrating like most games can be but yeah I love it I, me and my brothers have played a couple of times and stuff um, I had a phone call with them over Christmas saying yeah we need to set up some more games again because you can set yeah. up a lobby and then you all just play against each other and stuff like that um, yeah I, I I love it and I, I wish there were some changes to it but um, I no doubt there's going to be a, a version 2 of it because Arc Systems always do incremental increases and stuff like that um, of their games yeah. and refine it even further. So yeah, curious to see what they do next with it. Awesome. Cool. cool. All right, well, what you got for us? Um, I'm I'm gonna have to say it because I'm an absolute sucker for it, and I did have a lovely time with it. And I've gone back very recently and played the DLC or the first of uh, three DLCs come out, and that's Far Cry Six. Um, 
not a huge improvement over Far Cry 5 or thus over 4 or thus over 3 um, but continuing to provide anarchic fun playgrounds this time with a voiced protagonist and a vastly improved plot over all of them um, and plenty of fun to be had there were some changes to the weapon system which I didn't particularly enjoy but the uh, the shooting was still fun and the random chaos and the companions and all of that good stuff was still great um i played the first of three dlcs which was the vast dlc where you play vas himself one of the baddies from far cry oh, yeah. 3 and arguably the most famous baddie and you're kind of stuck in his broken mind and you're basically you're in this map you wake up in the middle and you have to essentially level up power up um and then get three bits of a knife and each time you die uh well it's the definition of insanity you're um doing something over and over expecting to see something different but in this particular case you can so you can do these <laughs> challenges you could every time you kill people um, you get a bit of the currency that currency can be used to upgrade your skills uh or upgrade the weapons available to you so if you die those upgrades stick so you you can get a bit more powerful till eventually you can break out um i did it i think it took me about six hours i had a nice time um i'll play the next one the which i suspect will be the pagan min from far cry 4 it'll be it's quite interesting to see some backstory um yes. it's yeah. perfectly good fun far cry 6 itself good game enjoyed it i think i spoke about it in fairly recent podcasts um so i won't go into too much detail um wonderful there's some wonderful moments the soundtrack's got quite a lot of um licensed stuff like uh ricky martin living la vida loca and the voiced oh, right, yeah. voiced protagonist danny whether it's male or female often you're driving around and you've got something like living la vida loca playing and they'll start singing along slightly out of tune to it and it it brings you in and it gets you to like these characters which was really missing in some of the previous games even jason in three um, was a bit just of a, a surfer dude, whereas the the main character in six is enough for an enhancement. I'm mean, very very likable, very cool. Um, certainly, I the I, I love the the female um, Hispanic accent on Danny, on the female version of Danny, um, a, a voice I could listen to all day. Fortunately, because I had uh, <laughs> about. 40, 60 hours. God knows how much of listening to that voice, but it was brilliant. Um, Enjoyed the it's game. Be the key, isn't it? Really, that's when you're it. playing for that long. Yeah, that's it. C- certainly, um, far more more like <laughs> deal, more like sitting with Cassandra from Assassin's Creed Odyssey than uh, with uh, I four. Um, just just a, a smoother, nicer accent as much as anything. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. One of my favourites this year, without a doubt. Nice. Definitely cool. All right, I just want to mention. Um, I, I think I've got to include Forza Horizon Five in my top three, wow. mostly just on account of its um, a- availability via Game Pass. Uh, I just wanted to include something off of that service, um, just just because I think like it's been like really um, liberating, you know, like uh, in terms of just reducing the barrier to entry on yeah. online gaming. Um, I don't do loads of it, but, uh, you know, I, uh, and even just like a game that's so accessible that you can just chuck it on casually when you've got a mate round and you don't have to like explain any complicated mechanics. You just whack it on and everyone's happy immediately. Um, I've, I've put as much time into it as, as some people have um my mate Ant, who i played it with as like reckons he's pretty much finished it um because he's just really into car games um but yeah so just on an objective level i just wanted to include forza horizon 5 because it's it's just a lovely piece of work and uh i've i've had more fun with that than a lot of other single player games i've played even though it is essentially a single player game on a sort of related note, but for the game, the sort of game, so Game Pass has led me to a few games I wouldn't normally have uh, particularly bothered with. One, one I did go for was uh, the new Halo, um, and I very much didn't enjoy that, if I'm honest. Uh, <laughs> I, I found it quite impenetrable. But one thing I'd heard about Halo was the gunplay is some of the best out there, 
And I just found it fluffy and uninteresting. I don't know if I've missed something. Uh, mm. But after the what I thought was um, from fair, fairly um, interesting gameplay on, for, uh, yeah. you know, shooting on some previous games, I found Halo's combat to be, which is the main thing about Halo, I found it to be quite unsatisfying. Maybe... Wombat, inv- wombat evolved. Yeah. yeah. You, didn't, you didn't equip the Wombat. Uh, maybe that's the issue. It's the Wombat for combat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, I reckon that, that view might have been from maybe two or three games back. And the last few ones, it's just rested on whatever laurels it had built. You've got, you've got to wonder. I mean, uh, maybe I, I didn't really look at the. Uh, I'm talking about the single player um, content, by the way. I don't have the reflexes yeah. to even consider the multiplayer. I mean, I don't know how well it reviewed, and it's essentially a free game. And there's people out there, I'm sure, are having a lovely think, time with it. But it's I think just it's not getting me. it's getting less reviews because a lot of people are waiting for the co-op, the campaign co-op, which won't be for a good few. Months still. Oh, the co op, sorry. Halo yeah. Infinite yeah. has 87% on Metacritic. Is that the multiplayer or the single player? Because this is the thing, they've, uh, they've essentially released it in two chunks. Uh, to me. Well, it's, I think yeah. it's just an umbrella, though, isn't it? A lot of that might be the multiplayer. Yeah. Uh, I think this is taken as the whole thing, because I think they waited. Yeah, look, taking both single and multiplayer as a whole. Halo Infinite marks a return to form for a franchise that is in desperate need of one. Yeah. It's open world, this one, and traditionally they are not open world games. So IGN gave the single player campaign, for example, a 9 out of 10. Um, well. Just didn't like it. <laughs> but it's a faceless. It's the the thing about Halo to me, right? Is I remember getting Edge magazines oh, like, Master Chief know, is the most two decades ago. Boring. And, yeah. And going like, wow! Look at those amazing graphics because it it really did make take a good like cover sh- shot, you know. Yeah. Um, and and but the thing is, I've I've just had no interest in this game f- from the beginning because you have a faceless protagonist like that yeah. has you know zero personality projected in the marketing at least. Yeah. And when I have played the games, they are just corridor shooters with the occasional big wide level that you can drive through. Mm. Uh, the multiplayer's been fun, but because none of my mates have been on Xbox, really, and it was more of an Xbox thing, I just never really got into it. Um, yeah. So anytime someone starts talking about Halo, I slowly want to kill myself. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, that's I just start losing yeah. the will. You know, yeah. it's just like, ugh. I mean, it's like, the, the only thing for me, so... the only thing for me, ugh. the reason why people would get this one yeah. is... I think it is an investment in having been invested in the previous ones or yeah. the story. Yeah, that's or something. it. Apparently, it's not it's, even a good first game to play. It's the season. The story makes no sense. Well, it wouldn't if do because just... it's off the back of what well, I think there's been about five Halo games now, six. So maybe. I have to play like all of them before yeah. this one? No. Yeah, I'm never going to do that. Never in a billion years. Never in another lockdown am I going to do that. Yeah, because like when I played um, <laughs> Guardians, I knew roughly enough to be able to get through that story. But like yeah. I said, it was basically carried for me because Nathan Fillion had a character in there, and he yeah. was being Nathan Fillion. So I was like, "Hey, cool! It's Nathan Fillion. Let's run around with Nathan Fillion shooting things. Awesome." <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think I just missed the boat because it's just my age as well. Because yeah. like for me, I played like Quake and like all these other games like no, this I don't, it's, I don't, it's not really your age Rob it's just not your thing and I think well, it's, it's perfectly I've, acceptable to me where I've invested me. years of my life has not been on this yeah yeah so, I, I just wouldn't I wouldn't it say it's fine. your thing I wouldn't say it's your but age the enemies really fucked me off as well they're like these weird little they're massive bullet sponges from what I've seen like you're shooting someone the, in the head like the little five ones, times the little fucking grunt things they're, they just annoy the fuck out of me <laughs> for so some reason them. <laughs> yeah, I suppose maybe that's intentional, so it makes you want to shoot them more. <laughs> but I just, I just find it a bit like I don't know. I'd rather be shooting horrid things that like look scary in that. These things aren't even that; they just look rubbish. Anyway, anyway. sorry, yeah. I digress. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah. that was your number two, uh, Halo. One back involved. Yeah, we're just having the occasional rant in between the the games that we actually give a yeah. shit about I tell you what yeah. though going back to the combat thing um, mm. 
the only time people realise that combat has kind of improved in games to the fact that you don't notice it is because if it's as good as COD, then you kind of like, that's fine. But when you play something like Cyberpunk, where the shooting is a bit off, and you mm. can feel that the experience isn't there, that's the only time I notice that you notice it. Yeah. yeah. So there's, well, there well, is actually now a plateau, time. a standard that we're used to, and every game that wants to have shooting in it should aspire to that, I think, by now. Well, and it can be hard to get when you're using a proprietary engine and, and outsource it. investing all the time into like outsource what, it. what it looks like. Outsource it. Yeah. If you're not yeah, good yeah, at doing yeah. something, yeah, bring a team in. Yeah. Go. Bring a team in yeah, that specialises like, in it. I think like the last Fallout game, they got um, id to come in, or, or the Wolfenstein guys to come in and give it a bit of a polish. Yeah, well, Bethesda could ago. do that because they own it. <laughs> yeah, especially if you've got a massive studio. But yeah, I yeah. think the problem with CD Project was they didn't really have any specialists, or if they did, they just you know they just weren't prioritising that. But anyway. Don't want to talk about yeah, side no, no. <laughs> Right. So, number one. Uh, you got another one, Will? Or well, oh no, Marcus, Marcus. Was it Will's one? Well, no, I've listed no, my two, number two. Um, okay, me too. So I've spoken about Immortal and Far Cry. Yep. We've all done a number two. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to do a number one. This will be short and accurate. Monster Hunter Rise. Oh, I, I not nearly I, didn't fall off my chair. <laughs> no, to be honest, I've talked enough about it. I'm just yeah. going to briefly say the game is insane how much they've managed to compact down into a Switch. Yeah. Um, having gone from a massive PS4 sort of, you know, it's not op- it's not quite open world. It's open zoned. You know, yeah. you've got various areas, but once you go into it, you kind of, you can run around anywhere you want in those. Yeah. And they're, they're really big zones. Um so it's kind of open world within different parts. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of the same, which is weird on a Switch. Once you've gone into this area, the map you can travel all the way across. I was I went on another mission. I've not played a huge amount of it, but because I've just started grinding and building up weapons and stuff because I'm yeah. getting back into the combat. And some of the mechanics are still a little tricky. But yeah, playing Probably it. Leave something my only, too my long. only gripe with the Switch is... You've got the controller that you do get where you can slide the Joy-Cons in. Yeah. If they made that twice as wide, it would be more comfortable to use. It's a little too short where they've made it square. You can get, because obviously there's that Pro Controller, which is yeah, I know, unbelievably expensive. Out. Yeah. Exactly. You can I just think get if they... knockoffs. You can get a wired, a USB yeah. wired one. Um I well, just find if they made that, you see the central part they have where you slide the two yeah. Joy Cons. If they made that that same amount wider, it would improve the comfort f- exponentially. All you need to do: piece of wood, bandsaw, cut it in half, drill it, screw it to a wider piece of wood. It sits better. You've got the two bits that hold it. Um, you, you could customize your own, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I get someone to three D print it. But then it's got to work with all the sliding in, the transmitting you, and stuff, has not it? It's, the chances are someone's making them, but yes, I do understand yeah. the pain. You just, anyway, want, yeah. you just want your hands at the right distance. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, the game is great. Um, they've, they've done the same thing again with Monster Hunter World, where they've basically just kept creating. I mean, it came out in March, yeah. um, and they've just kept doing what they did before, where they create extra monsters extra challenges yeah. and just shoveling them into the game and Keep you don't have to buy them it's, it's did the you same. buy like an extra switch for this uh, yeah I did uh, and we were playing yeah. like a little while but it's been a bit busy um, I seem to keep finding new ways of making life difficult in the household <laughs> yeah, yeah. well yeah you've had uh, a few challenges but um, yeah it, it's, it's great I mean playing it on the TV it looks great for a switch game it looks yeah. really good. Yes, the frame rate looks fine. A couple of dips where it goes absolutely mental when you've got four players and each has got like their own dogs running around attacking this beast that takes up a chunk of the screen. What the hell is going on? Oh, you're, yeah, well, you're, you're, yeah, yeah I'm going to have to have a well, word with BT. I think, got it, yeah. I think BT's screwing up my Just internet. Just makes it a bit hard to reply. No, uh, no, no. When that's fine. I can't hear what you say. Yeah, BT. <laughs> I think I might have to talk to BT about my internet because I'm on a pretty high level. Have now. you restarted your router recently? 
not in the last couple of weeks, so maybe I need to do that. First port of call, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I need to give mine a kick actually because uh, Witcher was looking a bit shit the other day. My but Sparkline yeah. adapter is my my biggest problem, so I use um, I use the the Sparkline adapters, and I have to reset the one that's next to me mm. quite often actually because it just drops and drops, and drops, then goes. Yeah, I'll drop some bullet points and I'll just end it, so it would just be a segment that you can okay. just add in. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I mean to be honest, the Capcom Resident the RE engine, same thing they're using for Resident Evil Village, same engine for everything, but it just shows the scalability of it that it works so well on a Switch. Um, yeah, the content they keep adding is an expansion coming out in summer. Um, same thing with Iceborne for Monster Hunter World. Um, that's going to be probably a paid expansion, but that will mean like another year and a bit's worth of content for forty quid. Well, I'm going to call Marcus's uh, Game of the Year 2022 now. If that's all right. Um, I don't know actually there's yeah. a couple of other ones I'm looking forward to but we can get forward round to that but um, <laughs> yeah to be honest I, I found it a lot of fun every time I go back to it I, I'm immediately blown away and like wow I'm playing this on the Switch it's insane um, so it's got to be game of, the game, game of the year for me cool alright uh, I think mine and Will's is pretty much the same oh, I think it can't not be really um, yeah Loop Hero what a Genie, no, sorry, yes, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you finished it. I still haven't quite got there. I was going to play a bit more of it after this. A wonderful. Um, I'm not going to spoil it in the slightest, but lovely, uplifting, yeah. set piece filled finish. Exactly what you expect from that game. Um, I, I like the fact that they've just carved and created a really well told story with an if you know with a re, you know a, a fairly obscure but i suppose well known these days marvel cast they've given the characters their own thing probably taken it more faithful back to the comic books not from the mcu um they each, went, they went through the same process i think yeah um, but or a similar process with the resources that they were able to get you know like yeah I just think they've um, they've really knocked it out of the park. If this is what the Avengers game could have been, or what maybe the uh, the the devs saw the Avengers game being before the Money Men got involved and said, "Oh no, you've got to do this and you've got to do this," it just shows. I mean, the the soul of the Tomb Raiders games is there. The engine. It was so obvious that a lot of these guys have worked on it. To me. Uh, there's lots of similarities, lots of gameplay elements that uh, sort of called it back. But the, the main thing with Guardians of the Galaxy is the narrative was exceptional. I think it's the best way. It was. It felt like being able to interact with an utterly perfect Marvel box set. It's probably the best way I can put yeah. it. Brilliantly told story, yes. thoroughly enjoyable, great characterization that only Marvel does to that level. And you could play it, so yeah, it was yeah, the, the shooting was really ask relatively more. uninspired. But God, you did the shooting to get through that battle. It's like watching the CGI action film scenes to get back to that banter, to get back to the enjoyable madness of the interactions between that crew and the other people in the world. Um, wonderful game, absolutely. But I, loved I it. think it was more nice. about giving the orders to the to the team and yeah. And, and, Getting the feedback, feeling you know, knowing that you were that, part oh, yeah, of that team, I, yes, I've, and the soundtrack. Yeah, I've got Groot doing something crazy, and you can sort of tell. Yeah, really. Oh, but the soundtrack deserves an absolute mention. Um, absolutely oh, yeah. perfect, and those little bit in a battle. I had it on. I think I had it on standard difficulty. I wasn't really challenged by the majority of battles, but whenever it was ready, being able to press R or whatever it was and do the huddle and have the little pep talk, and then it just puts on something, to, so you'll get Billy Idol's White Wedding, or Aha's Take On Me. Um, so, so you, you, in the middle of this battle, it comes out blazing, and suddenly it's a... Yeah, it's so well done. Shooting away. It's brilliant. Love it. Yeah, it was, uh, that that yeah. was a, an enjoyable mechanic uh, in a thoroughly enjoyable game. Yeah, sounds great. Cool. I've heard similar things. Yeah, no, I don't have much more to add apart from my little interjections there, just to sort of ram home that I'm in very much the same boat. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's been a, it took this. It's been a funny 
year, you know, there's been loads of games, but that half of them are games that I had no idea about. Mm. Um, and some are just ones that, like, I don't know, have just they've kind of come out like AAA releases, but they've just just been a bit underwhelming, yeah. really. There's a, there's a couple um, of small games I have played this year that are not up there in my game of the year, but thoroughly enjoyable, you know, sort of generally lower budget ones. Uh, Death's Door, for example, actually felt more like a game I should have adored. It's kind of an over the t- overhead Zelda-esque, but you're playing oh, a little yeah. crow who is a reaper. Um, and it's oh, yeah, beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. And it feels to me actually like the sort of game I need to play on the Switch on a commute, and I would yeah. thoroughly enjoy it. It feels, I feel like I've not been fair to it by not giving it more time. I may go back to it, but I also feel like it's almost a waste of my fancy PC. I, I, I want to um, fire it up <laughs> yeah. at the right time in the right place. To me, it's a travelling game. Uh, Loop Hero, great little time killer. Um, really interesting. Single screen, just going round and round, building up your power, failing miserably. The, the further in you get, the more you realise that it's no longer easy. Um, and also that was free. That was that was free on Epic. Was uh, it? I think the other day I managed Bloody to play that. Bloody hell! Yeah. yeah, and again it's on a dual yeah. screen monitor, and I've been doing boring writing work on one screen. I'll just nip across and kick off another loop on the other one. That that kind of uh, makes things interesting. Uh, and the only other one yeah. I'd quite like to mention that I did have a lot of fun with earlier in the year, but it was newly released. I know a lot of content's been added, so I'll probably get back to it um, for an online. Online Madness was Chivalry 2, so multiplayer melee combat um, with a definite sense of humour. You can pick up severed head. You can throw weapons that have been discarded. You can also throw severed heads or loaves of bread or whatever's lying Pigs. around and, and, and make insane uh, battle cries. And um, so I've not been on, been on it for a few months, so I want to get the new updates and see, see what's changed on there. That, that, that I had some good fun with. Cool. I've got a few here I wouldn't mind just quickly listing out. Uh, Road 96, uh, it's kind of an indie game where you basically are trying to escape or, or get to the border of this country. It's vaguely Mexico, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but each time you do it, it's like a little story and you'll end up in like little bank robberies or you'll just meet people while you're hitchhiking and they'll all have their own little stories to tell. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of get to the end and you're normally too skint, but you try and get over the border anyway. And sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But it t- they're really little simple like set pieces. And um, so- sometimes you're repeating little legs of it. But you, um, I've, so far, I think, I think it's about eight hours. I think there's probably eight runs that you can do. I've done three or four. But each time you do it, uh, it's a genuinely different narrative, uh, you know, um, pretty much. So, yeah, it's been cool. Um so pure storytelling, really, rather than gameplay. Um, and then uh, the rest, I'll uh, probably got to mention Wildermyth. Um, yeah. I've, 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 I think I've seen everything that game has to offer now. I've played through the t- two campaigns. Yeah. But it does a really good job of, like, sort of, um, as, as, as has previously been described, uh, you know, kind of creating that illusion of a, of a dungeon master-led campaign. Um uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, Psychonauts 2, I've enjoyed what I've played of it so far. Um, I played through the original and the VR game ahead of that because um, I just wanted to get to those first. And um, so far, this feels like a really, by comparison, feels like a really nice modernised version of that old game. Yeah. Um, uh, Artful Escape, I mentioned, was a crazy little thing with a guitar playing dude yeah i have that uh, downloaded and, i just haven't fired it up that does feel like a, a bit of yeah. a relaxer yeah yeah and uh sable which i've played a very small amount of um and is a gorgeous looking like sort of uh line it's what it's like a it's like line art almost um and you're kind of rummaging around building your own sort of cool hover bike thing that you can that I've 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 got that far and now I've got that and then I've got to go further on but it's not a huge game but it's an open world game and uh yeah I yeah I'm kind of digging that too uh yeah that's pretty much it really I think what like stuff that's notable and from this year that I am still interested in carrying on with basically yeah yeah, the only other game I've been playing is, um, funny enough, it's almost like going back to my Dreamcast days, uh, Sega game, um, Fantasy Star Online. 
They recently oh, wow. launched like a oh, big right. version of a Neo Genesis. Um, so I've been playing that. So I recreated Crikey. the character and gone back in. It's massively anime. It's Japanese as hell, but it's like <laughs> open world running around with your mates. Um, yeah. Some of the How mods people that? have done will make you blush. Uh, <laughs> most inventive use of beach balls I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> but, um, it's just mental, but it, it's a lot of fun, and it feels it feels like they've still got the spirit of the old Dreamcast game. And because it was the yeah. first online game I ever played, um, it still feels like that. Some of the sound effects sort of elit- elicit that same sort of feeling and that same sort of... And I, I've played it till like 3am a couple of times as well still. Um, and also the cool thing is you can jump back into the normal PSO2 as well and try and grab some of the bits and weapons from that before doing this. So they've kind of bundled them together. But the reason why I'm mentioning this is because... Mm. I think back in April, Microsoft made the decision to make any game that was free to play actually free to play online. So you don't need Xbox Live on a console to play. Oh, okay. Whereas previously you oh, did. Wow. So I'm playing this now online completely for free. Nice. Um, that's cool. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, that so doing I don't that. need I don't need Game Pass. I don't need anything for it to play. Um, if I log in on a PC because it's Cross gen between Xbox and PC, I will continue playing on that. So it's Xbox anywhere and free to play. Yeah, I cool, heard but... a rumor. Sorry, just for a while it is. There was there was talk, and I'm trying to find a bit more meat on it. There was there was talk about uh, PlayStation Now is be is yes. looking to yeah, they're, um, they're gonna... be changed and push in line yeah, more. They're going to merge. They're thinking of merging PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. Which is basically yeah. what, yeah, what that's, Game Pass no, Ultimate is going to be. What it is. Year. Yeah, they've just not given any real detail, I believe. No. But it, you combine so. the two things and that's what it is. Because weirdly, you can still buy Xbox Live on its own. So if you buy yeah. a game and you want to play online, but you don't want to buy a Game Pass, you can still yeah. do that. So it's kind of like the same thing. Um, yeah, that was it. They're planning to combine PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now to create a new ser- um, subscription service that can compete with um, Game Pass. Yeah. Makes sense. PlayStation yes, Plus um, now, or now plus, yeah. or yeah. now that now that's what I call PlayStation Plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, it, it it makes sense. They kind of need to. Yeah, Microsoft's um, sewn up the market with this model, and they've gone well. We don't want to look behind, and you know, I'm willing to change. Uh, yeah, I will state this categorically. If I knew that I would have quick access maybe not immediate day one but within like uh, a month access to playstation exclusives when they came out via this subscription and the subscription was priced not differently to xbox game pass yeah uh that would make me pull the trigger on a ps5 because i wouldn't need to pay tens of pounds for ratchet and clank for for the spider-man game knowing no. those came within that sub Actually, you know, it would let yeah. me have a go at uh, Demon Souls or Dark Souls remake and yeah. all of the exclusives out to date on that one. That's the sort of thing that would make me pull the trigger on that console well, do, without a doubt. The out. amount you would spend on two games for a PS5 mm. would be your it's subscription a for a year, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> or That's one's the near enough. Because they don't want you to buy... They can't even sell you a PS5 at the moment, so why would they oh, want you, to be incentivized? Well, you can no, still get well, it's an interesting. You, well, it depends. They'd prefer it if you didn't, so they could put some, some on shelves. Yeah, but the point is whether they're going to they're pla- is whether they're planning or capable of streaming PS5 games on PS4 through that service. Because that's PS5 where it gets interesting. On... Yeah, so if you've got a PlayStation uh, right, 4, you don't yeah. need the hardware. Whether you can use that service. So if you if if they could offer you uh, Ratchet and Clank a rift in time. Maybe at a lower graphical fidelity, but with that loading capability to go through the rifts and do all that fun stuff. If they can offer that on your PlayStation 4, if you're paying for this special service, so you don't even need to buy the console because you're streaming it, just like they do with PS Now and the PS4 games, uh, and like Xbox Mm. talk about being able to do, I've never tried their streaming service, that's when it gets rather interesting. I would buy the PS5 to play the downloaded version, but if you can stream PlayStation 5 games for £15 a month and you can't afford a PlayStation 5, I think some people are going to be interested in that. 
Yeah. So let's see where that goes. Well, it's when you it's when you put that on PC that yeah. it, as well. Like, yeah. It's like, what is the point of even having a console? Yeah, but if Stadia can, um, Stadia have already asked that question. Microsoft are doing it. PlayStation will push yeah. that way. The point of having the console might be because you've got a flaky internet connection, so you can buy the bit of kit that lets you download it and play it really funky there. Yeah. But if you live in the big city um, and have a uh, a billion megabyte connection. Like an absolute fucking boss, you don't need to wait for the chips, do you? Stream the fucker. So you've yeah. got options. Well, I mean, it might be. It's one way of getting their of, of switching their main focus to PS Five in the midst of a chip shortage. But I worry that that by it's too little, too late, and they should have been doing this a year ago. Uh, yeah, it might be the case. Quite possibly, but they may have been talking about this a year ago and only been ready to bring it forward because I can't. I suspect there's quite a lot of. Uh, organization folks so for the news to get out that they're doing it the yeah. chances are it's been in the running for a very long time and don't forget everything's a also, business I now. can speak I can speak from, I can speak from experience that Japanese firms are have some very arcane ways yes. of thinking um, shareholders to appease you know, they, um, and everything and it's it's a mind it's very complicated yeah, yeah I agree they, they but won't the point sell is, out or anything yeah but the point is it's it appears to be happening we can only predict what seems sensible and interesting. God knows whether technology can do it. But if Google can actually get fairly successful streaming on the Stadia, yeah. I don't know what the Xbox stream is like. I have done PlayStation now, and I've done that through my connection. And whilst there's a small amount of latency, I can understand that it's uh, if you've got a good connection, it'd be an absolute mofo. Well, I would still buy... Yeah. For me, the subscription would mean I would buy the console, because I can afford the console. Yeah. I would consider the digital edition, though, because I don't need a drive. No. If, uh, that's the point, yeah. yeah. And that's why the... And don't forget, Microsoft have set this up nicely because yeah. you'll say, what's the point if you've got a PC? Don't forget, PC gaming is a particular mindset. You want to be able to tweak it. You want to be able to have a lot of the graphics set in so that you can tailor your gaming experience to your hardware and optimize yeah. it. When you're a console gamer, you want to put the thing in the console and it goes or pick up the pad, switch it on, and the game just goes. Yeah. You get two um, sets of settings, really, don't you? I guess that what you? makes yeah. me unique, really, is that I can't stand uh, PC gaming. I only got a PC because I wanted cyber to, I wanted to be able to play Cyberpunk, hmm. and you needed a PC to do that. No, actually, I think it's because you had some money that was burning a massive fucking hole in your pocket. <laughs> that, definitely, that definitely enabled me to do that. Yeah. But I, honestly, I, if I'd have known Cyberpunk was going to turn out that way, I don't know if I'd have bothered. But, um, but I was going to say, my point was that it begins with things like the Xbox Cloud Gaming, which is taken off massively in Japan. Um, the Series S, you know you've got the, the Series X that looks like the mini yeah. fridge. That's the big yeah. granddaddy one. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, well, what's X, the point S of the Series tiny, S? Yeah. Series S yeah. doesn't have a drive. And yeah. it's tiny. It's yeah. about... It, I've it's seen, streaming. I've, yeah. Have you seen the size of that console? It is it's absolutely com- yeah. tiny. You and, look at one next to a PS5. And it plays 1440p, so it's basically a 2K console rather than a 4K. But it also does 4K up up resin if you've yeah. got a 4K TV. So if you're the not worried about... If you've got about, a small monitor, yeah, it doesn't make a difference. Well, to if be you're, honest, if you, I reckon on my, TV, console, on my TV, 1440p and 60fps, yeah. um, some games possibly push into 120, it's still going to yeah. look great because they've gone for that benchmark as standard. That's it. And then you combine that with streaming. So everyone's got great, better internet these days. And then everyone's looking to improve the internet. It's one thing that's constantly going round. You know, they've, they've, they're setting up the pieces. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They've got a strategy and it's, it's starting to pay off. It's starting yeah. to pay off. And people are saying that the, the Series S is, is one of the best consoles to come out in a long time. Simply because of what's capable. It's a backwards compatible machine. It's basically like getting an Xbox 360 again. You, if you want to do retro gaming, you can. You can pay yeah. 20 quid and turn it into a dev machine. And then you can turn yeah. it into a pure emulation machine. But you forfeit... Or you just turn it into an, a Game Pass machine. Yeah, exactly. It's a Game Pass machine to already. That That's the thing. It's 100% yeah. a next-gen Game Pass machine, which is amazing. Um, for it's a much easier sell yeah. to parents, which is why I yeah. have no interest yeah. in having the most powerful. Thing. That's it. My, my nephew um, got an Xbox. Uh, we bought it before Christmas. I bought him three months of three months of Game Pass for his Christmas yeah. present because he doesn't get an awful lot of pocket money. 
but that that's you know that works um, because he doesn't need to go out and buy the latest games because he will automatically get the latest games for exactly. stuff and it's just a, it's, it's a good way to do it it's brilliant definitely thanks for listening to the Not Playing Podcast part of the Not Listening Podcast Network where you can also find the Not Watching Podcast where we talk about movies and TV and the Not Listening Podcast where you can hear Adam and Co talk about all kinds of nonsensical nonsense you can email us at notplayingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet at or follow us on Twitter at NotBangPod. You can find the show notes for all our shows at notlistening.co.uk. And if you like what you've heard here, please do leave us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Until next time, bye!